Hallelujah. To, to, to thank God for today. Thank God for, Bible says, in all things, give thanks. For, uh, for every technical each, for the struggles, for everything, Lord, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Father. It is an honor to be here today. It's a privilege that we have to come in, where Bible says, two or three gathers in my name. That that's where he is. We are grateful, to God, for the opportunity to be in your presence today. Bible says, in your presence there is fullness of joy. And I pray that this morning we will enjoy fullness of his joy in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So let's let's pray, even as we speak the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you because today is the day that you have made you voice and the garden. Father, I accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, even as, even as we speak today, oh God, I pray that you will grant me your trust. Your auction will be upon my head, that I will not speak of my home, but I will speak by the leading of the Holy Spirit, that you will touch people, you will touch the life of your people, and our life will not be the same again in the name of Jesus, oh God. That your peace that makes no sense to human will be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so if you can hear me, just give me a wave. Hallelujah. If you, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, the, the, the message for today, by the grace of God, um, is tied to peace that makes no sense. Hallelujah. Peace that makes no sense. Peace that makes no sense. Okay, so the, the scripture for today, please, you're going to bear with me. The scripture for today is in the Philippians chapter 4. We will read from verse 4 to 10. Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 4 to 10. We will take it slowly because I, when I listen back to myself, I see that I, I talk very fast. So I'm going to take time and take it slowly, right? I'm sure I can complete it next Sunday if I can't complete this Sunday. So Philippians chapter 4, from verse number 4 to 10, right? Permit me, we will read two versions just to give us a better understanding of the scripture. Hallelujah. I'll read the Amplified Version first. It said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, take pleasure in him. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, your mercy, tolerance, and patience be known to all people. The Lord is near. Listen to verse number six. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, every circumstances and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. And the peace of God, the peace that which reassure the heart. The peace which transcend all understanding the peace which stand guard over your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus is yours did we get that Amen. hallelujah Amen. okay so let me read another version for you this is from new international version it said always be joyful in the Lord I will say it again be joyful let everyone know how considerate you are. The Lord is near. Never worry about anything. But in every situation, let God know what you need in prayer and request while giving thanks. Then God's peace, which goes beyond anything we can imagine, will guard your thoughts and emotions through Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, I will go back to number, verse number 8 to 10. It will be a, day for, a topic for another, another day. 
but I'll make reference to it as well. So basically, that scripture is saying that the peace of God that transcends all human understanding, which make no sense to man, who God is our own, who God our heart, right? Let me stay with my notes. Please let us consider some words in this verse. I'm sure if you read the verse, you will see the words like rejoice, worry, anxious, prayer, thanksgiving, peace that goes beyond anything you can imagine. God thought your heart and your mind. Those words were in those verse, right? So we will look at each word in that scripture, in those verses, and try to see the application of those words. Hallelujah. The peace that make no sense to human. That is what we're talking about today. So let me talk first about, let me define what is peace. What is your own definition of the word peace? Right? I am sure there are many definitions in dictionary for peace, right? There is one that I read when I was in school. It said, peace is not absence of conflict, but presence of justice. Someone says that for you to have peace, there must be justice. A peace is not absence of conflict, but presence of justice. That's another definition for, G for, for peace. Some say peace means tranquility. It's quiet. There is no noise around. It's peaceful. We all aspire for that, right? But let me see, let, let's see a different definition from the Bible, from the word peace, the peace of God, right? Let's see a different, please, I want you to be imaginative. I want you to picture these things that I'm going to read. I'm going to read through two versions of the Bible for the same book. It is a very popular psalm that we all know. We all know this psalm, and that is my definition of the word peace. But please, while I read this psalm, imagine, picture it. Be imaginative about it and picture it. The Lord is my shepherd. Psalm number 23. Okay, so... I am sure we all have different definitions for the word peace. I'll read the New International Review version of Psalm number 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. Right? Like a particular version it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What's the difference between need and want? It is when your need is the basic, the want is superior to need. God goes beyond supplying your need. He goes that, he even supply your want, right? So picture it, picture peace in that context. If God indeed is your shepherd, that is, let's picture, I, I, I said we need to be imaginative today, please. If we do anything, let us just picture things in our head. Let's be imaginative. Now, have you seen a shepherd with hearts of cattle? The cattle don't think, they don't do anything. They follow the instruction of the shepherd. They are at peace because they know the shepherd will lead them right. So if indeed God, every step of your life, while you move, while you do everything, that God is your shepherd, is the one directing you, you are in peace, my dear. That is definition of peace for me. It let me down in feed of green grass. 
I suppose we all know what that Greek grass means. I said, plenty grass, green grass means luxury. That is food to eat. That is, what are those things that give us anxiety? The fear of what to eat. Where, where, where am I going to eat? What's going to happen to me tomorrow? Do I have enough? If you don't have all of that, you don't have peace. When you worry about all of that, it takes away your peace. But if indeed the almighty God is your shepherd, he gives you those things. That is my definition of peace. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> he gives me new strength. The verse number three, he gives me new strength. Now, if you ask any elderly person, one of the, one of the things that the elderly people fear is the, the loss of strength. Bible says it is the beauty, the book of Proverbs said, the beauty of a great, the, the pride of a young man is his strength, but the beauty of the old is the gray, right? Now, every man, every, when I say man, I say man and woman want to retain his strength. You want to be able to do what you were doing when you were 20. I, if I ask anybody from over 50 to whatever age, if I say, let me give you gray hair or let me give you strength till you are 90, which one would you take? Would you take gray hair or strength? So you will want strength. You will want strength, right? But he said he gives you strength. That is peace to me. That is the peace that I'm talking about. It leads me beside still water. We all know these verses of the Bible, uh, scripture. Um, even, though, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. That is, even when everybody is saying, I say, casting down, I know I'll be saying, I say, lifting up because I have the peace of God. That is my definition of what the peace is talking about. I will take us the verse number eight of Philippians chapter four, verse number eight to 10. We will talk more. We will see why. See, where do you determine whether you are peaceful? Where, where, where do you sorrow? Where do you rejoice? Is in your soul, right? Man is in a spirit, soul, and body. Your soul, your intellect, your will are residing in your soul. And Bible says, it guides your heart. It guides your mind. The peace of God guides your mind, guides your thoughts. We will get there. Don't worry. I, I promise I won't rush. I have tendency to rush. I will try to take time. You prepare a feast for me right in front of my enemy. You know what that means? When you get um, a corn, grains of corn, and you put it in a glass bottle, and you put a chicken in front of that corn and the glass bottle. Can that chicken do anything to that corn? If no matter how hungry the, that hen or chicken is, and he will love to eat that corn, but because that corn is in that bottle, he can't do anything to that corn. He will just be looking at it. That is the that is my interpretation of you put a table before me in presence of my enemy. No matter how much the enemy wants to hurt you, right? <laughs> because the Lord is your shepherd, is your peace. That is my definition of peace. The enemy will just look and grumble and grumble and grumble from morning to night, can't touch you. No, he picture it, put a chick, put a a grain of um, corn in a bottle, put it in front of the chicken. He can't do nothing about it. He cannot. That is what I call peace. That is my definition of the peace of God that we're talking about. Hmm. My, cup, my cup runs over. That is, if I need to spend five pounds, I have 10 pounds. All I need is five pounds, but I have 10 pounds. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. He knows where I, I am very, very proficient in money. 
in everything I do. I'm very proficient because I am not the one doing the thinking. I'm not the one doing the thinking. He is the one doing the thinking. He, he can manage the resources properly. So I am never in want because it's not down to me, it's down to him. And that is why the peace is not a function of what I am doing. It is a function of what he is doing. Because I am not proficient enough in myself. I don't have the ability in myself. He is the one doing the whole, he is the, he is the business guy. He's the one in charge. The peace I am talking about is not defined by my ability. It's defined by his divine ability. So that's why I can never be in one. I'm all, my cup will always run over. And I am sure, beautiful, I love this. I am sure that your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Please tell me who doesn't love to be loved. We all love to be loved. And listen, he said, I like this version. He said, I am sure. If I'm not sure of anything, I am sure of the fact that his goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. So why do I need to worry? The opposite of peace is worry, isn't it? So if you're not sure of love, of joy, you will worry. But this one is saying for the rest of your life, if you're going to be 150 years on life, you are sure, you have, you have a guarantee. You have a God bank, God back guarantee that in 150 years of your life, you will live in joy and love. Hallelujah. That is my definition of peace. I am sure there are many, many definitions of peace, but that is my definition of peace. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Guess what? Please tell me the best mansion you can ever imagine. Can it be ever better than the house of the Lord? When you have a you have an, a, a place of your own, all the riches in heaven and heart is in his hand. And you live in the house of the Lord. You dwell with him day and morning, day and night. You, you know, there's no fear of your house being boggled. Your house cannot be boggled. You don't need a CCTV. You don't need all of those. It's not your responsibility. He, he's got better than CCTV for my house because I live in his house forever. What can you tell me is not peace? What, any other, what other peace? See, when I travel, when I travel, one of the reasons why I don't try to, I try to stay in an hotel when I travel is because I know the hotel, other than me booking a B&B or anything like that, that the hotel will most likely have is more secure than your b and I worried about my security when I travel, if I go anywhere, right? You're sure that the hotel, because the hotel is, you know, you would expect they have, they is more secured than your b and or your, what's that thing they do now? Um, which you go and stay in somebody's house. You're not sure of security. You're worried about security, right? Guess what? Living in the house of God, come on, what security, what can you be afraid of? It's no longer your worries. That is my definition of peace. Hallelujah. We are going somewhere. We're not there yet. We're just getting there. Hallelujah. We will get there. And I promise not to rush. Please bear with me. I am still divining the peace as well. Um, there is a version that I want to read out to you as well, quickly. It's still the same Psalm. It's Psalm number 23. And this is a, the message version. I will quickly read through that. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in the lush meadows. You find the quiet pools to, the, to, to drink from. 
true to your word. You let, my, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the, see, so like God sending me right direction. Let me give you an example. God sending me right direction. God will tell me that, well, this pandemic is coming. You have a pharmacy, you have a business. Go and get PPE, go and get all of those, and gel, go and get all of that. When the pandemic comes, everybody will look for you. You will make more money while everybody is struggling because everybody will want what you want, what you have. You can even increase your price if you so desire. That is what means God telling you direction is. It might not look sense, it might not look right to everybody, but because you're not dealing with everybody, you are dealing with him, he's telling you to do A while everybody is going B. Hallelujah. That is my definition of peace. Let me tell you one of the things that fascinates me most about God, which is one that I find incomprehensible most about God. See, Denise is holding a pen, right? right. That pen. She does not know what's going to happen to that pen, pen in the next two, three, four, five years. She doesn't know what's going to happen to that pen. But guess who knows who can, what can happen to that pen? God knows. That knowledge drives me mad. I can't phantom it. The fact that he knows the beginning and the end. He knows everything. Wow. That I cannot phantom. This, the minutest thing. The paper in your hands, you don't know, you, you probably finish, you scratch it, you put it in the bin, you don't know the hand of what's going to happen to that bin. Guess what? He knows. The fact that he has those knowledge give me peace. He said, not single here strand will come out of my head without him knowing. That knowledge is unfathomable for me. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed by that. That is definition of peace because he knows what's going to happen to me. And if he knows and he, I'm in his hand, why should I worry? Please bear with me. Today is just a preamble of what we're going to talk about next week. I'm trying to create a picture. I try you to be to, to see the picture of what that peace is saying, right? By the grace of God, next week, we'll be looking at how do we achieve, what do we need to do to achieve those peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's continue. Please, at your own time, look for the version of the, the message version of Psalm 23. Read through it. It will give you a different perspective, right? We, we have a lot to go through. So let me leave the peace. We just defined peace there. Let's leave peace there. So. Let's talk about, if we go back to the Philippians chapter 4, let's quickly go back to Philippians chapter 4, verse number 6. Are we there? If we are there, give me a wave. Okay, yeah, fantastic. I will read... Um, he said, never worry about anything, but in every situation, let God know what you need in prayers and request while giving thanks. Then, the word then means that for you to have God, then God peace, which goes beyond anything, would be us, who guard your heart. So, the greatest obstacle to you having God's peace is what? Worry, anxiety. Hallelujah. From that scripture, you can see the greatest obstacle to us obtaining, attaining that peace is when we worry, when we are anxious. We will not have that peace. So, and if you recall, I said we should note some words in those verses when we read earlier on. And worry and anxiety was one of those words that we said we should, I said we should know. So I took time to check out what does worry mean? What does anxiety mean? I suppose we all know, we, we are all English students. We 
or majority of everybody almost English. So we know what is in, the, the meaning of worry and anxiety means. But I'm sorry, I have a different definition for the word worry. Eh? So can we quickly look into Matthew chapter number six from verse number 25 to 34. Are we there? If you're there, give me a wave. Fantastic. Matthew 6, 25 to 34. I'll read um, with NIV. I'm reading the NIV, right? It said, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food, and the body more than clothes, Look at the birds of the hair. They do not sow or reap or store away in bands, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying a single hour, can, by, can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Worry, that's what we worry about, isn't it? We worry about life, we worry about food, we worry about children, we worry about job, we worry about economy, right? That's my definition of worry. Worry about what to eat, what to drink. So can anyone, <laughs> verse number 27, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? I guess it's even been magnanimous saying our can any one of us by worrying add a single second to our life. And why do you worry about clothes? I'm 28 now. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into fire, why will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So, do not worry. Say, what shall we eat or sh what shall we drink? Or what shall we be wear? For the pagans run all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will, give, will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So that is my definition of worry. So let's go back to it. We worry about what we're going to eat. We worry about clothes we're going to wear, right? We worry about so much things. And those things that we worry about, they take away our joy. They take away our peace. Worrying, anxiety are what? They are emotive. They are expressed in our soul, right? The easiest way, and another thing, okay, another definition of worry, or I can infer that you worry because you don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to, how am I going to feed myself tomorrow? I don't know what's going to happen if I will die tomorrow. So because of unknown, so ignorance is the greatest catalyst of worry. Ignorance is the greatest catalyst of worry. Ignorance in knowing God. But you know that by scripture says, he said, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. 
That's verse 33. Hmm? So those things that we worry about, those things, those worrying that they, they, they reside in our soul, right? In our intellect and our will, those things that we worry about, they don't really want it. They, they deprive us. They are the greatest obstacle to that fantastic picture of peace of God that I created, I, 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 I created earlier on. If you imagine, cast your mind back to those picture of the peace of God we were talking about. Just oppose that with this worrying thing that we saw. We can see that it is ignorance. Not knowing that God is more than able to meet all of our needs. And that's why we worry. And that's what denies of that peace that we define. I have a bottle of water in my hand. This small bottle of water is, a, is in a plastic bottle, right? What is the worst thing that could happen to me with this water? What? So, so anybody come to want to attack me with a bottle of water, this one, this guy, maybe, okay, somebody like told me want to attack me with a bottle of water. Will I be worried? I would not because I know it's just, the water is not even up to 500 mil. It's a plastic bottle, you can't cut into my skin. Do your worst, I would say, do your worst. I won't lose my peace on that. Because I know physically I can stand water. I know physically the plastic bottle cannot harm me. I know. So why would I worry about it? Why would I lose sleep about that? So if we indeed know that God is more than what we know we think he is, why worry about those simple little things? If we know the capacity of God, that if, in, if we know that he can be our shepherd and we shall not want, and that he will lead us beside the still water, if we know all of that, if we know that the house of God, if we're going to live in his house forever, that why will I worry of anybody coming to afflict me? We worry because we don't know. Hallelujah. For the peace. So, we, that, like I said, we are still, this is all still preamble. We are building something. We are going somewhere. We are not there yet. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father would help us to get there. Right? What I have done is to define peace and at, attempt to define worry. To see a correlation between the peace and the worries and what it is, what is in between both of them is just a door. That door is called knowledge. The door that is, in, that is between peace and worry is the door of knowledge. Once you open that door of knowledge, you either go into worrying or you go into peace. The more, John 8.32, he said, um, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. It is the amount of the truth that you know that will determine the amount of freedom that you have. It's in that knowledge, that door of knowledge. If you open it to that door of knowledge, you go into peace of God that passes all human understanding. Or you go open that door or you go into anxiety, anxiousness, and worry. The peace of God that makes sense to no man. Let me give you another example of where that peace of God that makes no sense to human happens. Listen to this. Luke chapter number eight. Verse number 22 to 25. One day, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. 
So they got into the boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squirrel came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in, a, they were in great danger. The disciple went and woke him up saying, Master, Master, we are going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. And all was calm. It is, he said, where is your faith? He asked his disciple. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, who is this guy? He commands even the winds and the water and they obey him. Who is this guy that can even speak to wind and they obey him? That is the kind of peace that makes no sense to human that I'm talking about. Paul Apostles was traveling. He, he was in prison and he was traveling to where, and I can't recall, right? With the jailer and everything. I think it's in the book of Acts. I can't recall properly. Now, God has told Paul what's going to happen. That there's going to be a shipwreck, but nobody will die. That they will all get there alive. Paul had a relationship with God. He has that peace of mind. So when there was a wave that was going to wreck the ship, everybody, the experienced sailor, they go all awire. They were scared. They start throwing steam from the from the boat. They throwing it into the sea. They were doing the experience. They were doing the normal scientific human stuff to keep the boat afloat. So if you reduce the weight on the boat, it will be afloat. Right? They were doing everything scientific to make sure the boat would stay afloat. Paul was not aborted because he knew God had told him nobody would die. He was not aborted. That is the kind of peace I'm talking about. He comes with knowing God. Hallelujah. He comes with knowing God. When everybody is running at a skelter, you chill. You just chill. Nothing is happening. When there's a casting down, we say there's a lifting up. We say thousands will fall on your left and the 10,000 upon your right hand, none will come upon your dwelling. When you have that, you have peace. Ignorance is the door, or ignorance slash knowledge is the door between the peace of God and the worry. Hallelujah. I cannot continue today with this. I will stop now because so that I can, you know, we'll take this from next week. But I hope I've been able to create a picture of what peace I'm trying to say and what I've defined worry. So next week we'll talk about guard your heart because worrying, anxiety, rejoice, everything like that, they all reside in your soul, right? They reside in your mind. So what, how do you guard your mind? Please read Philippians chapter 4 from, from verse 4 to 10. The answer is there, how to guard your mind is there. Whatever thing that is true, those are the things that we should deliberate on. That's one of the things that you think about. Eh? This book of love should not depart from your mouth. You should, you know, those are the things that will guide our heart. We will talk more about that next week by the grace of God. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. God bless Thank you. you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Well done, girls.